Alarmed by the incursions of the Turks into Anatolia, the Christians had prepared a huge army to descend on Muslims. They established crusader states, such as the Principality of Antioch, the County of Tripoli, the County of Edessa, and the Kingdom of Jerusalem in the Middle East, persecuting local Muslims. The Atabeg of Mosul of the Seljuk Empire, Imad ad-Din Zengi's steady efforts enabled the Muslims to relatively unite, and they began reorganizing their attacks on the Crusaders. Imad ad-Din Zengi was able to capture the city of Edessa from the Crusaders after many others had failed before him, and this compelled the Pope to call for another crusade. Twenty-three Christian factions combined their forces to raise a crusader army by the call of the Pope. The Holy Roman Emperor Conrad III and the French King Louis VII began leading the armies of the Second Crusade in the year 1147. Unlike the first one, this new crusade was decided to be commanded and managed by the kings themselves. The Eastern Roman Emperor Manuel I was worried that the Crusaders will begin another onslaught in his lands because the First Crusade had been too huge to be well controlled and they had ravaged all the countryside before they reached Constantinople. Taking lessons from the First Crusade, a detailed precautionary plan was made. The Crusaders would march across the Balkans stage by stage. The Roman garrisons were placed at every stage and markets providing supplies were set. The Roman troops were ordered to intervene immediately in any reckless behavior. Owing to the precautions, Crusader vanguard composed mostly of Germans reached Constantinople without any major problem. They passed to Anatolia without any delay. Having an extensive knowledge about Anatolian geography and the Seljuk tactics, the Roman Emperor informed the Crusaders that it will be difficult to procure provisions and advised them to be well supplied. He also warned them about a probable Seljuk ambush. The French had not arrived at Constantinople yet. The Germans decided that it is pointless to wait for them and began their march directly to the Seljuk capital city of Konya. When they reached Nicomedia, Conrad III of Germany separated his army into two large groups. The first group would be commanded directly by the Conrad III himself and the second group which was mainly formed of civilian pilgrims and troops to protect them would be commanded by the king's brother. The first group under the command of Conrad III took the path which was used by the first crusaders. However, the Seljuks were waiting for them near Dorylium. On 1097, the First Crusaders had defeated the Seljuk Sultan Kilij Aslan exactly at the same place. Now, Seljuk Sultan Mesut I desired to settle the scores. The Crusaders made haste in their march across Anatolia and arrived at the Dorylium plains to set up camp and resupply fresh provisions. Because they did not scout the surrounding area, they were completely oblivious of the Seljuk army nearby under the command of Sultan Mesut I. The German crusaders did not have any precaution against cavalry charges and the Seljuk cavalry ambushed the camp as swiftly as an arrow. The German army of nearly 20,000 troops were almost annihilated and Conrad III managed to escape with only about 2,000 knights. This 2,000 knights who were able to flee from the battle, retreated to Nicomedia and many of them decided to return Germany, completely abandoning the crusade. Meanwhile, the French had arrived at Nicomedia and seeing the Germans in a terrible state, they were demoralized and deeply concerned. They decided to take the southern way, through the Roman territory, towards Antioch. At the same time, the second German group tried to reach the Mediterranean Sea through the Greek settlement called Philadelphia, modern-day Alashehir, around January 1148. 
However, they were ambushed by the Seljuks on the way and this second German contingent was destroyed. The French crusaders under the command of Louis VII had Italian and English crusaders as well, and the other crusaders were sailing to Jerusalem. This united crusader army marched across Pergamon and arrived at Ephesus. Meanwhile, a word of warning arrived from the Roman Emperor Manuel I, indicating that the Seljuks and the Danishmans had merged their forces around Konya and they were marching west to confront the crusaders. Hearing this, the crusaders made haste to reach the Mediterranean coast. The crusaders had to move through a mountain pass called Kazukbeli in Hona's Mount on the 8th of January. However, the Seljuks had a deep network of spies throughout Anatolia. The Seljuk army, who had been informed of the route the crusaders preferring, took the positions on both sides of the narrow pass. They were waiting, ready to descend on the crusaders. The crusaders had finally reached the pass, which was about 10 kilometers and very steep. The Seljuks fiercely charged on the weary crusaders from both sides. The unsuspecting crusaders were shocked and panicked. Unable to sustain the heavy casualties, the crusaders rushed forward with huge numbers to exit the pass to save their lives, and many of them made it to the coast. The second crusader had been very tough for the Christians so far, because the Seljuks had destroyed more than the half of the crusaders. Those who remained alive had eventually managed to reach Jerusalem through land and sea roads. The nobles of the Kingdom of Jerusalem warmly welcomed the newly arrived crusaders. They called for a council to decide what to do with the crusaders. The council meeting took place near the vital harbour city of Acre on 24th of June 1148. The meeting was very long and full of debates. The strategic and geopolitical importance of the city of Damascus shined out in the council and therefore they decided to attack the city of Damascus. Until the year of 1157, the city of Damascus was officially belonged to the Seljuk Empire. When the news had reached the Atabeg of Damascus, he ordered the preparations to defend the city and asked for help from Nur ad-Din Zengi, who was another Seljuk Atabeg. The Crusader states and the newly arrived Crusaders merged their forces in the Monfort fortress and began their march to Damascus. While they were besieging the city, Nur ad-Din Zengi and his elder brother Saif ad-Din Zengi were on their way to Damascus. They had sent a letter of ultimatum to the Crusaders, demanding them to lift the siege. The Crusaders knew the Zengids very well. They had conquered the county of Edessa after many others had failed for 40 years. Moreover, the Crusaders did not possess enough forces to stand against the combined Muslim armies and they lifted the siege to retreat back to Jerusalem. The newly arrived Crusaders and their leaders were deeply dissatisfied with the outcomes and each one of them felt betrayed by the others. The news of the failed crusade was seen as a major disaster in Germany. The relations between the Romans and the French had deeply deteriorated after the Second Crusade. King Louis VII believed that the Romans had betrayed the Crusaders and accused the Roman Emperor Manuel I of treason against Christendom. Most of the newly arrived Crusaders decided to return while the others did not stay for a long time. The Crusaders did not want to provoke Nur ad-Din Zengi and therefore they did not dare to attack any Sunni Muslim city in the region. 
Finally, they decided to invade the Shiite Fatimids, who had been hostile to Nur ad-Din Zengi. However, having no choice, the Fatimid ruler begged Nur ad-Din Zengi for help against the Crusaders.